So I spent my young years in the Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 eras, and I'm not gonna say that's the greatest window for gaming. I am nostalgic, but I'm not delusional. Some of my favorite games are from the last few years, but there's something about modern games that don't capture something for me, which is the creepy, scary factor. Not to say I don't get scared from modern games, like I actually do. Alien Isolation scared the pants off of me when I first played it, now it's somehow a comfort game for me. I don't know how that happened. But certain games from back in the day, whether I play them again or even watch them, still grab me in a very specific way and freak out the kid inside of me, still. And I don't think it's just freaky nostalgia. I think there's something to the design of them that's been left behind since then. It's not about gore factor or jump scares or any of that stuff. They're not in there. It's something about game design from years ago that was better at creating unsettling moods. Or maybe we've changed. I don't know. But here are some examples of what I'm talking about. Jurassic Park for the Sega Genesis. Look at what greets you when you first boot up the game. <laughs> Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Others are probably pulling a good old doesn't look like anything to me. But follow me for a second. Everything from the movement of the T-Rex to the park gate is off. The Rex is too janky while the gate is too smooth. And then the music just cuts out. Absolute silence, which is something we're not used to these days. By the way, I just barely realized in the making of this video, the T-Rex says Sega. That's crazy. I don't get how this game has not had a spiritual successor since then. You could play through the events of the movie as either Alan Grant or a velociraptor hunting him. How awesome is that? Obviously, playing as the raptor was way more fun. It was quick, agile, and relentless like driving a Corvette with claws. I avoided Alan Grant's campaign mostly in part because of its intro. Watching it now, there's nothing really crazy there. The scene from the movie's more impressive, right? But look at that T-Rex. Look at his eyes. Look at how he moves into the frame. You were sitting right there in the car and he's looking right at you. And that's not to mention the sound design. Like that music and all that stuff. So what's up? I would be tempted to say it's an uncanny valley thing, but the term is a little overused for my taste, so I'll just say everything is a little off. The movement isn't right, the music is made by instruments that don't sound like anything real. The whole thing has a dream-like quality to it. You know where nothing is quite right? It's not scary, but it is unsettling and unfamiliar. And you see these things repeated in other games, like Alien 3 for the Super Nintendo. I can't believe this game was on a Nintendo system. You'd never see that nowadays, I don't think. Maybe. And let's dive into this one. Brought to you by Nintendo. What was up with that, right? That first screen is an ominous red on black wall of text. It's positively silent for the first three screens and then comes in with that weird music sound effect combo. And you have to wait until that dumb title is done manifesting. But it keeps going. Same as before, the Sulaco here moves into frame way too smoothly and yet somehow jankily. Although, that might be how a ship would move in space, huh? 
Everything looks rudimentary, except for Ripley herself, who looks pretty photorealistic, especially compared to that face hugger. When it comes to the sound design, it cuts between music, silence, and sound effects in a really jarring way. Look at the main menu and first level, for instance. That music though, it certainly makes up for all the quiet before. Outside of all that, it's a pretty standard platforming shooter. Kind of like Super Metroid, maybe Alien 3 was not a unique case after all. Super Metroid covers a lot of the same ground we just spoke about, so I won't repeat myself too much, but look at its gameplay. It maintains that quiet sense of dread and isolation and I guess dread is a good adjective for Metroid. And then suddenly it gets not so quiet. Basically, I guess we can say that the use of sound at the time was pretty pendulum swingy. And evidently, I'm not the only person who thinks older games can be inherently more creepy or scary. Every year, independent game developers create the haunted PS1 game demo disc. A compilation of mostly unsettling and scary, creepy demos in the retro style of the original PlayStation. It's a very specific throwback. And Signalis is a modern game that expertly captures that old game thing we've been talking about. It's definitely not a coincidence. It uses uncomfortable silence, rudimentary modeling, weird music, all that stuff to enhance the feelings that keep you off balance. I think there's something to be said about the creep factor of older media in general. People do the same with video. If they want their story to have an extra creep factor, they make it look like it was shot on analog cameras or captured off of a VHS tape. And when a director really wants to ramp up the chills, do they use a Bluetooth speaker in the corner of the room? No, they use an old warbly phonograph. This phenomenon is really a deep rabbit hole, and I'm sure we could go on for hours about what causes it, but for this specific video, I'll just leave it at, I think it's interesting. Why do you think we tend to get more creeped out by older media? And what are some games that still unsettle you? Let me know in the comments, I want to hear all about it. While you're doing that, please for sure grab a like, a subscribe, and ring the bell. It helps me out a lot and you would be helping get this channel off the ground in a more substantial way. Plus, you don't want to miss what's coming next. For now, though, stay tough and stop by again sometime.